And this is not something you do on the spur of the moment. There's been some active and meticulous planning going on by the air targeting officers on this operation for some time. And how difficult is it when you have the information and you have the targets to then essentially provide that information in appropriate ways to the coalition aircraft to make sure that they are staying on their mission, that they have the proper information and you don't have some confusion and these airstrikes are carried out? Well, I, I heard Admiral Fallon a few minutes ago talk about the complications involved, and he's absolutely right. Uh, my suspicion is that there has been a combined air operations center formed for this specific purpose so that this type of coordination has not just been done uh, exclusively by the United States, but those partner nations that have been participating alongside of us in these strikes uh, have been actively part of the planning and probably helped a lot in terms of providing the intelligence which led to these targets. Are you surprised that the information didn't leak in the sense that when you're talking about Saudi Arabia, Jordan, UAE, Bahrain, Qatar, all of their, you know, the military folks in each of those countries that would be involved in coordinating this. Um, and again, to have this information, to know that these countries are going to participate in some fashion militarily and for that not to leak until the strikes are actually underway. Were you surprised? Well, I really was, and I was pleased to see that. It, it tells me that the planning has been done in a fairly tight uh, control. And uh, for political purposes, it probably is helpful that we were seen to be attacking as a general coalition. That not only helps the individual countries involved, but the collective effort that uh, is being pursued by the world against ISIL right now. General Kimmett, tell us about what's going on over at the, uh, the Pentagon uh, and, and other agencies today as they try to assess the success of last night. How do they go about doing that, and how quickly do they, do they then turn that information around for the next round of airstrikes and, and missile attacks? Well, it, it's a very methodical process, and, and it is not happening at the Pentagon. It's happening in the field. It's happening at the headquarters uh, in Qatar, in uh, Jordan, and other places. This is known as a post-strike analysis phase where they're taking a look. They're probably sending uh, reconnaissance uh, aircraft, UAVs, possibly some satellite intelligence, to take a look at the damage that's in, been inflicted. And based on the situation on the ground and what they see from that post-strike analysis, uh, they could well be deciding to go after separate targets, these targets again, uh, or a second set of targets, which are the next on the line of the target list. Were you surprised by the tempo? I mean, now these were the, the, the most intense round of airstrikes since the United States began military attacks on Islamic State in Iraq and now, of course, Syria, the tempo much more intensified than over the last couple of weeks. Were you surprised at all? N not at all. I think this goes to the professionalism of the United States military and their ability to work with their coalition allies. Uh, the United States Air Force and Navy have been doing this since 9-11 almost on a continuous basis and frankly have been doing it in decades around the world in places such as Kosovo, Operation Northern Watch, Operation Southern Watch. Uh, this is practiced, this is rehearsed, this is done on a daily basis in Afghanistan. And I really do believe that it goes back to what the pr president said about the most professional military in the world.